It's the end of a golden era. Richard Willingham takes a look back. Graham Kennedy might have been labelled the king of television, but... Without you, I'm nothing. Without you, I'm nowhere. Bert Newton became its enduring face for more than 50 years. He was responsible for some of the most memorable moments in Australia's television history. Wait till my missus finds out that I've had Bert Newton in the car. Oh, she loves you. And some awkward ones. Uh, who out there wins this? It will be a shock. <laughs> I like the boy. <laughs> Having started his media career as a teenage radio announcer in Melbourne during the 1950s, Newton landed his first television job with Channel 7 before becoming Graham Kennedy's straight man on Channel 9's In Melbourne Tonight. Oh my gosh, this is a great surprise. <laughs> in the 1970s, he briefly hosted his own show on the ABC. I hope that at some stage uh, I have the opportunity of entertaining you again uh, anywhere in Australia, not necessarily the ABC, Channel 7, Channel 9, Channel O, Channel 10, <laughs> anywhere. And for more than a decade, he was with Channel 10 as the host of Good Morning Australia. Despite roles with all major networks, Bert Newton will always be linked to Channel 9, where he cultivated the role of sidekick into show stealer with such aplomb, he was racking up gold logies, largely for his cameos on The Don Lane Show. All the while cementing a reputation as Australia's best master of ceremonies and the host of the Logies. I was nominated 11 times, 11 consecutive years, uh, including five years for the best new face. <laughs> Even when he wasn't hosting the Logies, he had a presence that easily upstaged those around him. That presence took him to musical theatre where he also shone. In 1974, he married Patty McGrath with an estimated 10,000 fans outside the church. The pair were TV royalty, their two children following in their footsteps. In 2008, Bert Newton was named Victorian of the Year. Australia's television industry is in mourning. As it says goodbye to the man called Moonface, who became one of its brightest stars. He's got the star. In the history of Australian television, oh, one name has almost star. always been there. Mr. Bert Newton. Bert Newton. <laughs> Albert Watson Newton was born to a Catholic household in North Fitzroy in 1938. He first appeared on radio at the age of 14. At 20, he joined GTV9. And one appearance on the evening program in Melbourne tonight led to one of television's greatest partnerships, Bert and Graham. Do you remember that joke? Look out for the Indians. What Indians? <laughs> the great thing about those early years was that uh, everybody was learning together, including the audience. Hello, uh, ain't you that Bert Newton? Yes, I am, as a matter of fact. Would you... Over the next decade, Bert honed his skills in reacting to anything and everything that live television could deliver. Well, can I help you? No, no, just go ahead and do that. Where do you have to stick it? <laughs> Graham Kennedy not only gave Bert his most enduring on-air partnership, but named the awards that Bert made his own, the Logies. In his record 19 times as host, his mastery of off-the-cuff quips, knowing looks and careful pauses made him look like a cheeky schoolboy sharing the joke with all of us. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh. Oh. May I? Excuse us. Congratulations. It was especially handy during some edge-of-the-seat moments, such as when under-the-weather US actor Michael Cole let slip a word which had never before been heard on Australian television. Oh, shit. Congratulations, Mike. It was my fault. That was one for a particular episode in the series. And Mike just mentioned the particular episode. The incident generated hundreds of calls of complaint. But then... Back in those days, they used to replay the Logies on Sunday afternoon. And so they edited that 
little bit out. And they got 3,000 calls from people complaining that it wasn't in. This was an era when the entertainment world's biggest names would attend the awards night. Bert had to talk fast after inadvertently insulting boxing legend Muhammad Ali, using a phrase from one of Bert's recent commercials. <laughs> really? I like the boy. <laughs> Did you say Roy or Boy? I like the boy. Is there something wrong with saying that? Roy. Yeah. Well, hey, hang on, hang on. No. Really? I'll change religion. I'll do anything for it. I don't, I don't care. All was clearly forgiven a few moments later. 1978 Gold Logie winner, Bert Newt. <laughs> Bert would go on to collect four of the gold statuettes. Who else but I was somebody? His second great on-air partnership came in 1975 with the man dubbed the lanky yank, Don Lane. Both men said the first time they met was on air and the chemistry was obvious. Is working? Is it working for you? I don't know, but I think I love you. <laughs> What we're going to do here is work your groin on the inside what of the leg. What do you think you're going to do here? <laughs> While the show was a vehicle for big name guests, for many viewers, the big attraction was Bert and the wheel. My name, my name is Dammit Roulette. <laughs> you want some? You like some? I was in my bed, just lying in my bed, and I saw that thing. <laughs> and I came out of my bed immediately, but and now I... I love you, I love you! Wait a minute. It's moon face. Don Lane provided one of the Logies and Bert's most memorable moments when he collected the gold. And I know you'll know that I mean this when I do it. Here, pal. Six months in your house and six months in mine. How's that? All right? The show lasted until 1983. Two years later, Bert was dropped by the Nine Network. Unemployment and bankruptcy followed. But in 1991, he was back in yet another guy's morning TV host, back in his natural habitat, live television. Probably thinking to yourself, well, he's now doing morning television. Surely death is next. Far from being yesterday's man, Bert continued to provide inspiration for the next generation of performers. He's about intellect. He's about a wisdom born of experience and my life is much richer having him as a mate. While professional partnerships would make his name in the industry, one personal partnership would outlast them all. Paddy McGrath was a singer and entertainer when the pair started dating in the early 1960s. By the time they married in 1974, policemen had to control crowds outside St Dominic's Church in Camberwell. She took his name, but equally he took hers. They would always be known as Bert and Paddy. I suppose every day I think how lucky I am that I've got him, it's and I hope I never lose him. It is a pleasure to be here uh, tonight to, uh, to introduce... <laughs> Molly is actually kissing my wife Patty over there. A first for both of them. Well, there you go. Their two children, Matthew and Lauren, were raised in the public eye. He's fantastic. As well as being the top of his profession and an absolute inspiration, he's a great mate. I've always been really proud of Dad and I just hope he has a wonderful night. Not as much as I'm proud of you. <laughs> Family bonds were tested by Matthew's court appearances and battles with drug abuse. Bert was also tested by numerous health scares, one resulting in a quadruple bypass followed by several bouts of pneumonia. At least they could joke about it when Patty received an honour for, amongst other things, fundraising for medical research. I've needed to know a little bit about medical research with Bert. But another shock setback loomed. It started with just a toe infection in Christmas 2020. Months later, it had worsened. Doctors telling the diabetic he had a decision to make, his leg or his life. It was needed and he had a choice and his choice was to, um, to live, really. It bought the 82-year-old life's most valuable commodity, time. We've all been sort of gathered around him a lot and it's mainly for the grandchildren because he wants to watch them grow. It would be wrong to label Bert as a TV survivor for his long career. He thrived on TV, in radio and his latter years in theatre. 
Burt was a one-man history of Australian entertainment. Great television, he once said, is made up of moments. No one has given us more unforgettable moments. Without you, without you, without you, without you, without you.